Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpabana chapam Animadi biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhavani Vishukra prana harana varahi viryanandita Kameshwara mukhaloka kalpita shri ganeshwara Mahaganesha nirbhinna vignayantra praharshita Bhanda surendra nirmukta shastra pratyastra varshini Namaste, and welcome to another episode in the series of Lalita Sahasranama. This always gives me great pleasure and bliss to narrate the meanings of these names. And we got four pretty substantial ones, so let's dive right into it. Nama 76, Vishukra Pranaharana Varahi Viryanandita. Vishukra, we mentioned him last time. He's the brother of Bhandasura, and his name means full of semen. <laughs> That's a demon for you. Anyway, Varahi Devi, the uh, right hand uh, military general of Lalita, uh, slayed him on the battlefield. And uh, Lalita was very pleased about this. Uh, and then, this concludes the section about the Varahi and Mantrini Devis, the, the right and left hand uh, highest ministers or secretaries or assistants of Lalita. And the next few Namas are going to talk about Ganesha. But first, let's finish this up. What is the meaning here? I mean, besides the historical meaning, because all these things really happened on some level, that these three devis destroy all the impurities due to ego. Banda means fool, uh, jester, mime, comedian, wise guy. <laughs> So Bhandasura being killed and his, his brothers as well. Huh? This means that ego and all of its relations are killed by devotion to Lalita. So this is very good news for all the devotees because they really want to get rid of this ego. But how practically do you do it? Well, in devotion, in bhakti, Bhakti rasa means that you develop a relationship with the deity and you do it through association with her devotees. So one can have a relationship with a guru. Um, in my case, it was a direct relationship revealed inwardly um, with one of her dear close assistants. <laughs> This is confidential stuff, so I can't go into details. But what it means is that one has a direct path from this life, this present identity and body, to a life in her planet, the Sri Chakra, the capital of the universe, the golden city, where she creates, maintains, and destroys the material creation. With Shiva, uh, but Shiva doesn't take an active role. Shiva is uh, simply the observer, the witness. So when one gets to, to be in her presence, then she can reveal Shiva. 
And when the two of them unite, well, that's the ultimate. <laughs> so one has to put oneself in the position where one has this direct relationship with the goddess. And it comes about gradually, step by step. There is a path and one must construct one's own path because everybody's different. Everybody worships a different aspect or a different quality uh, of the goddess. And everybody has a different flavor of devotion. So their story is going to be different. But it's the same thing, ultimately. You have to construct your path, your unique devotional path from who you are and what you are now to perfect realization of the non-dual truth. So this is something very few people ever talk about. And I think it's such a difficult subject matter because it's unique in each individual case. So my path would not work for you or your path work for me. But you have to find out the general factors. And this is something I really want to discuss in a separate video. So I'm going to move on. Nama 77. Kameshwara Mukaloka Kalpita Shri Ganeshwara. So this next three Namas talk about Ganesh. Now Ganesh is the oldest son of Lalita and Shiva. And in this case, Ganesha was born strictly uh, to neutralize a particular weapon that Bandasura deployed in the battle uh, between him and Lalita. So the Ganesh was born simply by Lalita glancing at Shiva. Uh, she doesn't have to contact him. She just gets the idea or the feeling of being with him and she can produce offspring. See, this is her. She is Maya. She can create anything. Huh? It's <laughs> completely up to her. She's just playing. This Bandhasura and all this, this was just an exercise in Maya, the creation of an illusion and its subsequent destruction. So one of the things that Bandhasura did was to deploy a certain yantra in the midst of Lalita's forces. And this yantra had the effect of dispiriting her troops. They started to become discouraged, which is, is nonsense, huh? Because Maya, Maha Maya, is in control of everything. <laughs> but because they were overcome by the illusion, instead of being masters of the illusion, they started to succumb to this trick. So what did she do? She created Ganesha and Maha Ganesha is the remover of obstacles. In the next Nama, Vignayantra Praharshita. So he removed the obstacle of this Yantra, uh, this Vigna, this obstacle. Uh, and the qualifications of one who could remove this obstacle are that one must have control over the Puryashtaka, the, the eight forms of ignorance, including the five organs of action, the karmendriyas, the five organs of senses, the jnanendriyas, the antakarana, the illusion within of mind, intelligence, consciousness, and false ego, the five pranas, the five elements, desire, ignorance, and karma. So the total components of Puryashtaka are 27. And when the attributes of Shiva are added, that makes 28. And wouldn't you know it, the Mula Mantra or the root mantra of Mahaganesha has 28 syllables. So you see how this all ties together so beautifully. Mahaganesha Nirbhina Vignayantra Praharshita that he removed the, uh, what's called Jayavignam Yantra. Jayavignam means the obstacle to victory. 
So this yantra of pure ignorance containing all these 28 factors of maya was created by Bhandasra. He's a pretty powerful dude. But of course, <laughs> Mahamaya, Lalita, is more powerful and because she's the source of all this illusory power, she can easily negate it. So she created a son, Ganesh. Ganesh is very powerful, very intelligent, uh, and very creative guy. His Mula Mantra of 28 syllables goes like this. Aum Shring Hring Kling Glaum Gang Ganapataye Varavarada Sarvagyanam Me Vashamana Yasvaha So we have to see the, the beauty of all these namas huh? and the way that the Sahasranama is composed. I really, you know, <laughs> I feel bad that so few of our viewers are tuning into these Lalita Sahasranamas because the Sahasranama is the way you get bhakti. Uh, it is the weapon. I remember one time I was having difficulty, right about the time I took sannyas from a shakta devotee. I was having some problems with my landlord and this and that. It was like two years ago, more than that now. And anyway, I had a dream. And in, in my dream, the mother, Lalita, was standing there. Huh? And I was also there. And suddenly, I had a sword in my hand. I had a weapon. And then, when I woke up, I realized, oh, actually, my guru has given me the weapon. I asked him, what can I do? Uh, you know, these people around me are really getting me down. And he said, the Lalita Sahasranam is your weapon. It will give you strength of heart. So I began to chant it. And soon enough, all the problems cleared up. And, oh, and all the rascals were punished. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. So she will not remove the veil of Maya unless one works for it. In other words, you have to make the effort. You have to deserve it. You have to do some sadhana. You have to do some seva. You have to develop some bhakti, some love. Huh? Then she will very easily remove and you can't tell, you really can't tell how it's being done. You know, I wish I could describe all these things in detail that have happened to me, but it's just too confidential and people wouldn't understand and then they would make offenses and that's no good. But anyway, Nama 79, Bandha Surendra Nirmukta Shastra Pratyastra Varshini. She counteracts all the weapons of Bandhasura. Well, of course she does, because all of his weapons are simply illusion, maya, ignorance, huh? bandha, foolishness, stupidity. stupidity. <laughs> because he thinks he's the doer, he thinks he's the controller, he thinks he's the owner, and that he's entitled to things. But actually, we know that's all illusion. That's all maya. Huh? So he has fallen head over heels for maya. <laughs> He's into it up to here. <laughs> and she knows all this. And she could withdraw all his powers in an instant without any effort at all. But to create a morality play, to create a dramatic scenario that will be a lesson that will not soon be forgotten. She staged the whole thing. She allowed Bandasura to have this power of Maya. And then she showed exactly how to counteract it by her own weapons, including these wonderful thousand names. <laughs> Om Tatsa. 
ஆம் சாக்தி ஆம்